Alec, who yes. uh, would you like to call? Uh, I would like to call Ghost uh, to Buster. Ghost T. Buster. I was going to say, let's Carl, co, uh, call Carl Winslow to the stand. You know, Carl, Carl Winslow? Winslow? Carl Winslow <laughs> making a cameo, cameo appearance in this movie? Not the actor. The actual character, Carl yeah. Winslow, was there. <clears throat> did you know? Yeah. That's crazy. This is what I say. Carl, Carl Winslow, this is before he moved to Chicago and before he uh, before he had to, to deal with the whole all the diehard incidents, you know, all that. And mm-hmm. that was before he had to deal with his very, very annoying next door neighbor. Mm-hmm. This is the precursor to that. <laughs> precursor to that. Why is he playing cop and everything? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it is Origi- original Val Johnson, I believe, oh. is his name. And uh, I love. I I grew up on Family Matters. I think he's he's a great. I think he's a great fun TV actor. Yeah. I really like him a lot. And and then he always has these cool bit roles Stand in out. big movies. Probably the biggest, like most memorable role from this movie. <laughs> it's easily easily the standout of the film. A big applause, you know. Yeah. Um, so we're here to talk Remarkable. about Ghost Ghostbusters um, in preparation for the new Ghostbusters film uh, that's to be released later this year, uh, where we decided to do yet another one of our movie series where we're catching up, going through a whole film series, and gonna be talking about it. Mm-hmm. Now, Zach, remind me, had you seen? Ghostbusters before? No, I haven't seen any of them. That of them. that was remarkable. I yeah. I haven't seen Ghostbusters two or the or the. We'll get into that later. I suppose. Or but the or part I, three. I have, <laughs> I have seen Ghostbusters uh, numerous times. Mm. Um, it's a movie that I'm very very fond of. It's one of my favorite comedies. Actually, <laughs> I, I love this film. Yeah. Um, but. Getting to getting to watch it again. It's for the first time in a couple of years, I think, that I've seen it. So it's it's good to get to watch it again and uh, enjoy mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of a lot of jerk a lot of jerk jerkery assholery from Bill Murray and uh, I feel like Bill Murray d- plays deadpan. the same. He's like the same character in a lot of the roles he does. Yeah, I mean, I think I think some of it is like it's kind of just him a little bit in it's general just it's just, just kind of him <laughs> like he just doesn't really care like the i think the, the sort of like my favorite part about his performance in this movie is that like it's it's like that just sh- shy of he just doesn't really even care about them like about anything like the movie even like it's almost like just he just exudes this sort of uh, just above everything and and doesn't care even does maybe doesn't even care about the production but he's still so charming i guess and... but dude is a creep in this movie though don't get me wrong this dude is he's kind of a creep <laughs> he's a creep yeah he's like he's preying on these women through this through his uh ghost busting <laughs> and and like and in the very beginning with this whole shock experiment thing the shock experiment yeah and like moving out yeah, yeah he doesn't i mean he doesn't do anything to to her yeah but he's He's a, he's a little bit of a creep there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a jerk. Yeah, yeah. he is. And he always <laughs> seems too old. He I mean? always. That's, seems what, that's the too impression old. I always get from Bill Murray. I thought when I watched Groundhog Day, I'm like, this guy doesn't seem like the right age for this girl. Like, he just has an old look about him. But yeah, especially the first girl in this movie is like that's a young girl. Yeah, I mean, she's like, she's like. Like a, like a like a collegiate student, a master student, or something. Maybe just in college. Yeah, and he's like in his thirties. So yeah, it's a little weird, but well, he's taking you know. advantage of this shock experiment. And <laughs> a little weird, but that's okay. A little bit of an eighties. <laughs> it's it's alright. <laughs> you got to convert from the eighties. Overall, I, I think it's pretty good. I, I'm not blown away by Ghostbusters, but no, oh, I love uh, this movie. It's it's. it's... <laughs> I don't know if it's, it's just a classic thing. Sometimes classics can be hit or miss for me. It's like, you know, mm. whether I get the actual charm as if I watched it for the first time. Sometimes it doesn't work if you if you haven't wa- didn't watch it when it first came out or like at least closer to the time. Yeah. But I mean, I enjoyed it. That's good. But it got it got a little I didn't even I didn't know it got into all this wacky uh off the rail <laughs> stuff it got into and these freaking oh, you didn't? dogs and yeah, creatures. Yeah, it gets yeah, yeah it gets weird. <laughs> yeah. The freaking like lo- weird lore of the 
the ghosts and stuff. What were the names of these? Uh, Z- Zool. Zool and yeah, Zool. Yeah, was... and the key, the key master, and the yeah. What's the other one? The gate, the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty wild stuff. Yeah, you got you got Rick Moranis. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Who, who who gets possessed and is the the key master? Yeah, she has uh, to and, live uh, next door to him all, all the time, having him come out every time she comes in. Rick, Rick Moran is really leaning into the Canadian accent in this film too, like like really hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's quite quite funny. Um, yeah, he's just kind of the the awkward, nebbish little next door neighbor who yeah. kind of has fancies her, but can't really bring himself to you know really uh, say much or you know. Well, she's not. She's not into it. He's just. He's a, yeah. He's like, he just, every he, every he just, day when she comes home, he's he, I, he freaking he's, flies he's just, out that door. Saying, I know it's it's terrifying. And he keeps actually. locking himself out every time. <laughs> yeah, even when he's got a party, he's like, "Come on, man." So, okay. So, general synopsis. Uh, Need a synopsis for Ghostbusters? Not really. I guess it, it is. I mean. Who hasn't seen Ghostbusters by now? I, well, you. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you have by now. Now you have. Yeah. So I, mean, I guess like, by now, I, I mean, guess you were the you last. If you haven't seen it by now, you're never gonna yeah. see it. Yeah. Uh, I just there's there's so much to really enjoy about this movie. It's just it 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 plays the idea so straight, and I think that's kind of where a lot of the charm and humor comes from. Is just making these kind of nerds silly and fun and cool in a way even though they're also at times very incompetent and sort of the foolish and, and, and dumb, mm-hmm. despite the fact that they're smart, but it's really all down to the writing. I mean, the writing is just awesome in this film. I, I and I don't know, how, like, I don't, I don't know, like all the, all the bits and details, but there, there are definitely a lot of elements of Bill Murray's performance in particular, where it, it legitimately feels that like he just sort of ad libbed a lot of it, mm. which, again sort of fits kind of the the not really caring sort of attitude that he has through most of the movie right I mean, um, like his character doesn't like the character itself is like feel like doesn't care about what he's doing from the beginning and i mean he just he's like he's like all he's all on board though like he's all in like in this whole business but it seems like he doesn't take any of it seriously like, <laughs> most of the movie yeah well, I mean, when it starts taking off and when they start actually doing the, the legitimate work that's mm-hmm. happening, it's like, hey, he's benefiting off it. So like, it's like, he doesn't even he's... take it seriously when she's floating off the bed. He's still, he's cracking jokes about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we never talk anymore. Like, <laughs> that's that's one like of my that. favorites. I want you inside me. Yeah, I mean, it was. Like, sounds like you already got two two people in there. It might be a little crowded. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of. It's like good... he doesn't. Be- it's like he doesn't believe in ghosts, but he's like he f- he's fully seen proof the whole time. <laughs> so it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's, obviously, like a... he's obviously the standout. Like I didn't know going into this because you know I knew I knew there was the the four classic Ghostbusters, but mm-hmm. I didn't know how prominent each one was. Like Bill Murray is the one I I knew really mostly as the actor, but mm-hmm. yeah, I didn't I didn't expect him to be as prominent. Like. I thought it would be more of an equal thing. Like the others have some standout moments, but it's like really heavy in in that favor, though. And Venkman is a, yes. definitely the Peter, main character. Peter Ven- Peter Venkman, yep, is the is the primary sort of character. Then you also have uh, Egon Spengler, mm-hmm. who I think he's probably of of all of them. I think he's my favorite, just because like he, I mean Harold Ramis is was one of the writers, uh, along with Dan Aykroyd, um, which uh, I, I think people have joked for a long time that Dan Aykroyd actually thought he was making a documentary when he made this, considering that Dan Aykroyd is just very, a very odd person. <laughs> um, like, he is very, like, into the whole paranormal kind of idea and of, of everything. Um, <laughs> uh, but he play, I mean, he plays the earnestness of... Um, Oh, I always forget his character's name. <clears throat> Ray Stance. That's Bill. That's uh, Dan Aykroyd's character. Right. Um. And then yeah, and then Ernie Hudson plays uh, 
Winston Zeddemore. That's his name. I wouldn't so, never have Winston. remembered that. Yeah, Peter, Ray, Egon, and Winston. That's quite a name, isn't it? Egon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I just, it just Egon's like the most, it's, it's like, I, I, like, I knew people like that in college. It's just like the very, like, like, so, like, it's so overly serious that, like, when he says the most ridiculous things, it's just hysterical. Um, it's great. I, I love it. Um, so they, they, yeah, they, they start up this, this ghost, this ghost pest control business, which, uh, I feel like I can relate to like a lot more now, like now that I'm, I'm into, I'm into pest control and it's like (laughs) playing, playing this, uh, having this plot revolve around essentially ghost pest control is just such a ridiculous concept. Mm. And yeah, I mean, I, I think they just they they do they do it very well. I mean, I, there's definitely times where I feel where I feel like I'm when I'm going into a house, I feel like a ghost. I feel like a Ghostbuster. <laughs> wow, because yeah. things um, just kind of happen inexplicably, right? Like there's no reasoning for some of these ghosts. Like they're just doing things. Eggs are popping, you know. They're just like a. She opens up the fridge. There's this whole freaking building and the Zool creature or whatever. Well, yeah. just like so much just, just happens randomly yeah and it's like oh you just call him up okay well yeah yeah call up the ghostbusters yeah the guy uh, and she's uh, i'm dating a ghostbuster mm-hmm. yes the one on tv even though um, and again this is something weird with this like some 80s movies too is where like the creep role like the creep angle like ends up working out in the end you know like he he was he was being weird with her at first, like when it was clearly just supposed to be a job. He was being weird, but then it just it works itself out. It's like, oh, okay, that's that's a good idea. I should try that out. <laughs> I should try that out. I should try <laughs> try being really weird around women. <laughs> yeah, because it looked worked worked out for him pretty swimmingly. She was she, she was like, oh, I'm on a date tonight. Like, oh, okay, wow. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. Like he, he was kind of a jerk, but there, there was just something, something charming and earnest about him. So, just like the Groundhog he, he just, Day character, he just rolled those nat- natural twenties on on his charisma <laughs> rolls. I guess. I guess. Um, the uh, well, no, but so but you did mention that it's like there wasn't there wasn't a reason for it, but they they did explain it as the movie went on that the whole reason that all of these paranormal things are happening specifically mostly centered around this building was because of uh the the people that constructed it were all worshipers of zool so they they constructed this high rise to summon zool someday Uh so that that's that's the reason and it was just the time was right you know for for zool to to come but didn't they go somewhere else initially like weren't there ghosts other there were yeah there were library one there there were ghosts other places yeah yeah, but so but I mean, New York had sure New York can have some paranormal stuff going on. So it's yeah. just like a librarian who didn't want to leave, you know. Yeah, and then just <laughs> these freaking dogs though. I was like, that's not that's not a ghost. That that's like a some like Hounds of Baskerville kind of stuff. It was like it's just these creepy red eyes and stuff. I didn't expect it because all I'd seen from Ghostbusters were like the slime, slimer, slimer and those kinds of ghosts. You know, is what I was expecting. Like the colorful ones the whole mm. time these funky looking thing <laughs> the little creepy the creepy dog things yeah they're just like i mean they, some of these things started out subtle but then by the end of it it's like freaking charging through walls and like hell bent on getting that guy uh the rick moranis character <laughs> yeah. Ter- tearing through a central park to to get him pretty much yeah yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of fun like little New York sort of New York landmarks during this era. Um New York still feels kind of like gross, which it should cuz it's the 80s and it's before the cleanup big mm-hmm. cleanup product project, but it doesn't feel like re- repulsively. It just feels like a real like that's New York. There it is, you know. Yeah, you get, right. the, get the streets <laughs> and everything. So, um you know, it didn't go. It didn't go whole hog on it like Escape to New York or anything. Where, I mean, Escape to New York's post-apocalyptic New York, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, 
it just this the writing is just to me it, it like it, it tickles my funny bone the, yeah it's deadpan it's very sarcastic um and yeah it's just kind of a a, a lot of a lot of preposterous stuff it's just it's clever it, i think they just did such a good job with fleshing out this silly goofy world and cracking jokes the whole time so mm-hmm. i didn't yeah i do like some good deadpan stuff mm. and then they're like oh, the, they have the whole final showdown sequence where they're up on the, the building and <clears throat> you got the four of them lined up mm. and this is like a reference i got from watching i watched the epic rap battle of ghostbusters where mm-hmm. they did this whole thing so I, I knew where this was going just from that because it was like, okay, they're lying. This is where they got that from there. Yeah. And when the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man comes out. Yep. A, a very iconic moment. Um, yeah, it's been even been parodied, even though it, it in and of itself is sort of King Kong or Godzilla-esque in, in, yeah. in a way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's fun. It's a fun moment. For mm-hmm. sure, they have to save. They have to save New York, and they're like they're like really popular at this point too. They're like they're like beloved icons of the city. People yeah, got like right? merch, merch, and everything. They got like the Ghostbusters T-shirts, and hey, can you tell me? Well, first of all, what a great logo they got, man! Oh like, yeah, they really did that. And but <laughs> is the Ghostbusters theme is that canon? Is that like? Is it? I think it's, it's only ever played within the movie, like over, <laughs> over top of the actual movie playing. You never see it played within the movie. So, like, is it an actual theme within the world? Yeah, like maybe, maybe is it like you? It you not? think they should have tried to play it diegetically, where it was like people were like, like a band was actually like Ray, what Ray Williams Jr. was actually uh, yeah. uh, singing it somewhere. <laughs> you have the whole branding with the logo and the vehicle and everything. You'd think. I mean, that's such an iconic theme. I mean, yeah, we, I think we take it for granted now, just from oh, it's, how much is known. But it's such a good song. It really is a good song. Yeah, it's, but yeah. but it's I'm always like, oh, this is like this is just an editing though. So you never actually the characters never hear it. But yeah, it feels like it would be something they'd have as their branding. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe by Ghostbusters too. Maybe they'll they'll have embraced it, and it's oh. an in world thing. Maybe. Yeah, I wonder what they do for that for the second one. Yeah, I've never seen it. Um, I do know that it's generally speaking is not held in nearly as high regard as the original, but I, mm. most people I've heard talk to about it still say it's just still really good though. So I don't know. I've never seen it and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to doing so. Um, and then Ghostbusters Afterlife. I, and I double checked on the cast cause I was curious about it. And they, they mm-hmm. did say they're going to have the classic actors that are still alive at least. Yeah. You know? Harold, yeah. Harold Ramis unfortunately has passed. Um, but I'm like, damn, they they are really old now. But like, they're really up there. It's, really, it's been it's been 37 years since this movie. That's crazy. I know it's pretty pretty wild, isn't it? But like, they're all gonna be there, including Sigourney Weaver too. Sigourney yeah. Weaver's coming back. I didn't. Yeah. I, I did not know. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah, this is also this is Sigourney Weaver at like probably I won't I won't say like the peak of her popularity, but she was kind of huge at this period of time. Like this is this is fresh off of. Is this fresh off of Aliens? It might be. Hmm. Um, oh, that's yeah. another movie I haven't seen. She she was kind of a she was kind of a big deal at this period of time. So it was like, um, it's crazy that she. I mean, she's in this silly comedy film that, you know, and she plays like two characters basically. She plays the 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 love interest then she's also like the possessed ghost that's summoning zool and she's like she's like all like that's like so so did the ghost do the makeup or did that like transform her yeah, face yeah. you know the like had to do that makeup yeah i guess i had to do that makeup oh it's not bad yeah, Con- like, really contoured her eyes and everything like, all, like, the, all the zool stuff that i did i was like i, I could take it or leave it huh? <laughs> I, I didn't do anything for me but i'm like okay I didn't. I didn't expect it to go any of those directions with this movie, mm. but. Um, but well, the uh, you know, it's it's all having to do with the EPA guy, though. He, yeah. He ruined everything because so the EPA guy comes in. Peck Walter Peck. Peck. Yeah. Yeah. And he. Uh, yeah, he just he just screws everything up. I mean, he's he's the reason. 
we had this this apocalyptic event <laughs> going on in New York. I mean, all the ghosts roaming are able to to summon the portal to 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 let to let Zul. A Sumerian. Remember right. Sumerian, not Babylonian. They're very different things. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, the whole the whole uh the whole great moment where uh the Ghostbusters are are laying their case down to the mayor. Uh and uh and my favorite line in the movie where after after um Dan Aykroyd calls uh calls Peck dickless mm-hmm. and and then the mayor's like, Is this true? <laughs> yeah, like, Bill Murray like, is like it's true, Your Honor. This man has no, this man has no dick. <laughs> yeah. And then it like keeps going, like he's he's like, oh, that's just what I heard. After they're like freak, after he was like freaking out. And everything. <laughs> that was a good just scene. What I, I did really like when they were wrecking that whole that whole place. Oh, the, ball, the the ballroom. <laughs> it just destroyed yes. everything. They did. It was great. They did that. <laughs> but they didn't even get their payment. I thought he was gonna like get him to pay him right there, but. No, he just, he, he just wrote it down. Him. Like you're not getting that. You're not getting anything out of him after that. No, nah, no, they'd have to. He's gonna have to. That's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that guy's out of... like, you get the money now, and then it's like, oh my god, what did I just <laughs> but, pay for? But but think about that. Think about that. That guy had to pay. That guy paid. Uh, what was it five grand, three grand for that, or whatever? And, uh, yeah, and then, in addition to the repairs that he's gonna have to have to uh, request for the for that ballroom that got totally absolutely scammed. destroyed totally scammed yeah oh. he's telling the guests so it's gonna be ready it'll be ready <laughs> it'll be ready <laughs> yeah. wasn't ready <laughs> <laughs> but what do you take would you take a destroyed ballroom or that and disappoint your guests uh the people that are paying money or would you rather have them all freak out because slimer is eating up everything in the ballroom look with the it, like you didn't really accomplish it. like what I think the whole point was to get him out of there so they could have the guests in there. <laughs> like, no, you have neither. Like you just got nothing out of it. You just nothing. You paid. Yeah. You paid for the damage. Look, like, so, uh, so yes, I, uh, co- cockroaches. Yeah. There must be some cockroach. Yeah. <laughs> so I enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, I didn't think it was the greatest movie in the world, but no. I enjoyed it. It's okay. It's not the greatest movie in the world, but it is. Is one that I very much enjoy. Um, mm. It's just just so much fun. It was just a lot of fun. I laugh. I don't cry, but I do laugh yeah, do quite a cry? lot. What's nah. there to cry about? Nah, what's there to cry about in this movie? They have a love theme. I guess you could cry over that mm. in the score. It's like, mm. Yeah, beautiful. It's a beautiful love mm. story, really. Mm. As all movies are at the end of the day. So it's classic, a, it's a classic post. romance, really. <laughs> what score would you give it out of 10? I mean, it's it's hard. I, like I, I I always I always say this, but it's like it's always hard with movies like this because it's like you got rose tinted glasses on. This is yeah. I mean, in a way, I kind of do. I I talking it's, about uh, some Zool, talking about some Zool mumbo jumbo mumbo jumbo. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's tough when it comes to movies that are, that have a that have a bit of a nostalgia factor to it. I didn't like grow up watching this movie, but I did. I have watched it several times. I guess in teenage to to now, I have watched it quite a few times. So, mm. um, I do have a fondness for it for sure. Um, I mean, I, I I can't I can't go any lower than a nine, mm-hmm. um, and I don't. And I I, I want to give it a nine point five because I just I, this is such a good movie. There's setup and payoff. The script is fun and tight. It's extremely witty, thought out. Um, all the characters, there's not really like character arcs, but they're all given time and things to do. It's just a, a fun, doesn't have to be the most serious movie in the world. Also, it gave us a great song, pop song. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, I, your I, nine is that what you're settling on? I'll settle on a nine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to give I want to give a higher. Honestly, this is like a ten out of ten movie for me. But I'll, I'll settle on a nine. You don't I have think to that's se- fair. You don't have to settle. Okay, nine point five. Then I'll meet Jeez. myself in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> that's high though. That's mm-hmm. high. Couldn't be me. That's okay. I uh, mean, it's not. It's fine. Like this is one of my favorite comedies. Like this is one of my favorite movies. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah. I will give it an eight out of ten. Okay. Okay. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it's good. good. You, you enjoy it. Yeah. So what is that? Eight point seven five. 
Eight point seven five out of ten. Stark Ron yeah. score. Right. Nine point five. That's that's a that's a high score. That's high. That's, that's high. high. Well, you know what? Well, you know what? I regret other scores a lot more. I'm not going to regret that one. That's that's deserving. Hmm. Tell him about the Twinkie. That was another <laughs> reference to the, yeah, the, the epic rap battle. I was like, oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Tell hey, him about the Twinkie. About the Twinkie. <laughs> so they had a good amount of references in there because it was like I knew all, yeah. a bunch of them from that rap battle. Um, all there right. you go. There it is. That's the first Ghostbusters. So your predictions are yes. that n- none of them will reach that score, right? I, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely I d- not your nine point five. <sighs> nah, definitely, definitely not. It's I don't I don't see that happening. Um, Does but, any do you ever hear anyone say Ghostbusters two is better than Ghostbusters one? I've never heard anyone say that. Okay. Never heard anyone say that. Even people that really like it a lot, I've never heard anyone say that. All right. But wait, maybe it'll be me. Maybe I'll Maybe. be the one. I mean, hey, that could be interesting. That could be a fun dis- that could be a fun discussion. We'll have to see next week when we when we review yeah. it. Ghostbusters 2016 is better than Ghostbusters the first Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. I think you you would probably have to be checked into a, a home in order if you're thinking that. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Uh-huh. I really um, Ghostbusters Afterlife is a big question mark, huh? It's a huge question mark. Like I don't know if I'm gonna because really gonna, like it or maybe I'm gonna, gonna hate have, it. Like, ghosts like these ghosts in like 2021 technology now where it's like all we know is these 80s looking ghosts so it'll be weird right yeah it'll be uh, it'll be weird and it's it's like is it is it like an action movie like there's bits of the trailer that i've only seen the first trailer but there was like parts of it i was like is this supposed to be like like, a, like an action movie comedy i i just wasn't sure yeah no. So you got Finn Wolfhard in it though. And Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Yep. All right. So come back next week for Ghostbusters two. All right. And what video should our viewers watch in the meantime? Uh you should go check out our our um you should go watch speaking about ghosts, I ain't afraid of no ghost. Uh you should go watch our review of the haunting of Bly Manor, which is very, very different than this. But uh mm-hmm. it, was, it was a good show. And it's about ghosts. So so you're going to see Luigi's Mansion 3. I mean, that's another yeah. ghost. Luigi's Mansion is definitely Ghostbusters inspired. Oh, Luigi's Mansion is totally Ghostbusters inspired. Absolutely. So that's what I thought about when the ghosts uh, flew through the, the wall. I'm like, oh, that's, that's straight up Luigi's Mansion. It's straight up, yeah. You see him go through there. There's definitely there's definitely a lot of influence from from that. With Yeah. yeah. Luigi might not be alive today if it weren't for Ghostbusters. Wow, that's that's it. something to think about right there. So. You could sit on that for a week. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, subscribe to our podcast feed, like the video, leave a comment, hit the notification bell, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and like us on Facebook at Tarkaron T W O. All right. <laughs>